So here the idea is that we have a company that is actually receiving a lot of invoices. And for this purpose, I decided to use as well um, the AI builder that is being used to discover data on the invoice. And then what we want to do is to simply have an approval for the invoice um, so that it can then go into the for the processing. So what is done here is that first I build these, uh, the model. So it's, it's model built uh, on top of the forms processing. I put here like five invoices. So just one remark here, if you're building your own AI builder models, just bear in mind that you have to like create a separate model for each layout of the, of the documents you want to process, because even if those layouts are kind of similar, then there is really no certainty or, I mean, the AI builder will try to maybe match some um, fields that it recognized on the on the data it was that was used for training, but it might not be actually the most accurate. So if you have different layouts, different invoices, different uh, other documents that you would like to process using the AI builder, then simply create separate separate models for each layout, and then AI builder will just automatically try to use the one that, that fits the best, um, the document that you're scanning. So I have the AI builder that is used to scan the invoice, to discover fields, to discover data. <clears throat> and then this data is being passed on to Power Automate that is actually generating an adaptive card and is sending to the Teams channel, or it could also send it to a specific user for the approval. So with this approach, we are not actually requiring user to navigate away from the digital workplace in which they are supposed to work. They're not navigating from the conversations, from the documents that they have in Teams. Uh, they're, not, they're not forced to like go to flow approvals or go to uh, email or to any other uh, third party system to express their approval or, approval or rejection. They simply have this approval done in line with their work. So they don't really have to um, be disturbed by, by any other activities. And then once they approve this, this uh, invoice, there is just now uh, a confirmation mail sent or rejection mail sent, but this MVP solution can then be extended into, for example, storing this data into CRM or, I don't know, forwarding this invoice to accountancy uh, department and then to to archive to archive it or for payment. So the, the the opportunities or the ways to develop this solution are quite en endless uh, regarding the processes that we have in in companies. So just let me show you how it works. That's a very simple app. And then I want just to analyze a new invoice that is coming to to my company. So maybe I'll just use that one. And right now this invoice is being analyzed and AI Builder is trying to recognize values on that that are actually matching those that have been used for training. So as you can see, um, the invoice without any, any discoverable uh, values is just that plain. But then once I switch on those labels, it gets a little bit more uh, fuzzy. And for each discovered um, as an entity, it is also showing the, huh, how it's called. Well, anyway, how, how sure, how certain it is that it discovered it properly. So like for example, for the build to and the contact information, uh, this uh, confidence is just 70%, but then for other values, this confidence is around 100%. So the next step I need to do is simply send this invoice for approval. And what you will see right now is that I will be posted here an adaptive card with all the information from the invoice ready for the approval. Okay, there it is. So this is the invoice that has been generated by the Power Automate based on the data that was scanned by the AI builder from the invoice that was received, for example, by the front desk. Um, yeah, there is just one quantity missing because it was not discovered, but well, that happens, it's not a perfect tool. But having this 
all data here within the Teams channel, I am actually able to just simply express my approval or rejection right away without any need to go elsewhere to, to just navigate away from, from my work. I as well can put here a hyperlink to let the user open the physical copy of the invoice, the scanned item. So if they're in a doubt, they can just compare the values, but I don't actually need to do that. So what I can do now is just simply express the approval and hit go. Now note that once this card was approved, it as well got replaced with a confirmation card, but um, differently to the message cards, the confirmation card is not following the experience, the layout, the, the interface that I crafted so carefully for the, for, the, for the request card. So it has been replaced with just a basic layout of, uh, of an adaptive card uh, composition created by Microsoft. Now, how it was how it was done? Well, actually, um, the approval workflow has is, is being triggered by the Power Automate, and then Power Automate is simply pushing a lot of JSON information <clears throat> from this kind of invoice to the Power Automate, so that you will notice there are multiple variables here to just get value for each for each field discovered by the uh, by the Power Automate, sorry, by the Power Apps, and then. What is also important is that there are a lot of actions here <clears throat> that I used to um, to build to concatenate this JSON code of an adaptive card. I spent quite a lot of time to actually be able to generate this adaptive card properly to get information of all the items that are in the invoice and simply to have this fully working, properly working JSON code uh, available for me to post it to, uh, you see it's very long, mm -hmm. to post it to Teams. So it's been quite a struggle. Um, now, as you saw, I just used a lot of actions. I put a lot of those outcomes inside the JSON and I spent quite a time to actually craft this adaptive card it was good okay but i think that it would be easier just to have like a template right for this adaptive card and within this template to have some placeholders that could be dynamically replaced by the data um, and by that i'm thinking about the templates and how they could be used within the adaptive card so how we can really even leverage adaptive cards onto the next level 